for the devil to consume us. We are not consumed because of your mercy. We are not consumed because of your mercy. We are not consumed because of your mercy. We have one more minute to pray and say, Father, we thank you because this week we will experience the goodness and mercy of God like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because your mercy is speaking for us and your goodness is manifesting for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will experience the goodness and the mercy. I will experience the goodness and the mercy Thank you, Father. We are going to pray for, for our city. Yesterday, this came to my mind. I was, I was thinking about the, the eclipse. I was thinking about the eclipse. And the first thing God said to me about the eclipse is that I just want to make a statement that I'm still God. Because we live in time and generation that people are beginning to think there is no God. But I'm happy that NASA cannot make no eclipse happen. I'm happy that no scientist can make an eclipse happen. It's a statement in the heavenlies. It's a statement in the constellation. It's a statement that there is God. It's a statement that there is God. When it happened during the crucifixion of Jesus, people were shocked. In the middle of the day, it turned dark. And it's going to happen again. But we're going to pray for the city of Mesquite. Because people are traveling all over. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's shakata. The devil likes to take advantage of such things. But we want to plead the blood of Jesus over Mesquite. I want to declare there's no casualty, there's no calamity. Listen, the devil cannot take advantage of this occurrence to bring mesquites to a state of mourning. There will be no mourning, there will be no crying, there will be no lamentation in mesquites. We cover the entire city, the north, south, east, and west with the blood of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray for our city. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we release the precious blood of Jesus over the city. We declare in the name of Jesus, that nothing will go wrong with transportation and people commuting from one place to another. We frustrate road accidents. We frustrate auto crashes. We declare the Alama share. We declare there will be no emergency in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare there's no calamity. We hand over mesquites in the hand of the Lord. We decree, declare mesquites in the name of Jesus is secured by the right hand of the Almighty. Everyone that we visit our city, that we go home successfully. We refuse anyone to die. In the name of Jesus, we refuse anyone to die. In the name of Jesus, we refuse any civil disobedience. We refuse anybody to, 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 they will refuse any gun violence. In the mighty name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over Miskit. We plead the blood of Jesus over Miskit. Ah, I wish you are praying with me. We plead the blood of Jesus over Miskit. We plead the blood of Jesus over Miskit. We frustrate every plan of the devil. The devil will not take advantage of the eclipse. As people visit us, we secure them in the blood of Jesus. We declare no evil will befall our city. No evil will befall our city. I want you to lift your two hands and just give God praise. Father, we bless you right now. We thank you because your right hand of power is on our city. We declare that Mesquite is the city on a hill. We declare this is the city on a hill. We declare this is the city of God. We declare this is the city of God. We declare that Mesquite is Goshen. Mesquite is Goshen, Lord. This is a Goshen city. This is a Goshen city. This is a Goshen city. Therefore, as tomorrow comes, we frustrate every plan of the devil. We frustrate every plan of the devil. We refuse anybody to die. Hallelujah. And we ask for your presence on this service. Bless us. Anoint the speaker, the preacher. Anoint our pastor. Anoint everyone that will function in this service. Let your presence be felt. Let your presence be known. Let your name be glorified. We bless you and we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. For in the name of Jesus, we worship. I want you to go ahead and just say, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Are you 
Are you ready to receive? I want you to get ready to receive. We are ready to receive of your presence. Let's give the Lord a hand clap offering this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy as we worship the Lord. Hallelujah. What a fellowship. For the cleansing power, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Let me hear you now, together. Are you washed in the blood, in the cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments? Are they white? Are you washed in the blood? Are you walking daily by the Savior? Walking daily by the Savior side. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All together. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Let's sing that again. Are you washed? Are you washed? Yes, I'm washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Yes, my garments are spotless, it is white as snow. Yes, I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. Be, yes, amen. Hallelujah. All right now, Rhonda, you know some of these songs. Come on up here and help us sing, too. Grab your mic. Grab your mic and help us. Well... I think it's hooked up, isn't it? it is. Grab your mic, all right? And you know this one. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Life is worth a 
living because there's worth the living just because he lives. God sent his son. First verse. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died. He lived and died to buy my pardon. And My Savior lives. Come on now, sing it with me. Because He
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Majesty. Hallelujah. Worship his majesty. Unto Jesus. Unto Jesus. Be our glory, honor, and praise. Majesty. Kingdom of glory. Flows from his throne. a ship without a sail, like a ship without a sail. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, do you know Pastor Samuel to come on down and uh, or Gaylene as well, Debbie, come on down as well. Um, also Die, Die, come on down. And if you will help us and just we're gonna open up the altar. If you need prayer this morning, you need someone to pray with you, agree with you, then you just come down. The Bible says, Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray anointing with oil. And we've got some oil up here. So Amen. Pastor Samuel, the oil is right here, and uh, if you want to just uh, for just to spread that around, and the Bible says, if there are any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church to come and anoint with oil, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And if you need prayer, you want to be anointed with oil, you need prayer, come down right now. We're going to do this, but come just come, as soon as we start singing, you need prayer. Come on down. Don't hesitate, but come quickly. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that. That's right. That's right. You need prayer. Come on down. Master, Savior. Us, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 
Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms, kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something sing it again. Jesus, 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 there's a something about that name. Master Savior, touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul oh the joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know something happened and now I know he touched me and made Touch me, he touch me. Oh, he touch me, and all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. me and make me whole. Shackled by a heavy burden. Shackled by a heavy burden. Neath the load of guilt and shame. Neath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me. Then the hand of Jesus Jesus touch me, and now I am no longer the same. I am no longer the same. He touched me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I've met this blessed Savior, since I've met this blessed Savior, since he came and made me whole, since I will never cease to praise Him. I will never cease to praise Him. I'll shout it while eternity. He touched me.
touch me. Sing it again. invite the ushers to come down right now and bring communion and as you're ready to come and take that communion and take it back to your seat we're going to receive that together this morning the blood of Jesus. Come on down when you're ready to take the communion back to your seat a whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. No other fount I know, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What Oh, 
precious is the flow. Oh, precious is the that makes me white as snow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Let's sing that again. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white. Pastor Calvin to come up and lead us in this time as we prepare to take communion together. The Bible says that we should take it in a prepared way, that we are prepared with our hearts. So take a moment right now before the Lord and Pastor Calvin, come and lead us in this time. We come this morning. We do give him praise. We do magnify him today. For he is a mighty God. He is an awesome God. We thank God for this day, dear God. So we come this morning, oh God. Amen. Once more again, to celebrate Jesus, to honor Jesus this morning. Amen. And thank him for his shedded blood at Calvary. So at this hour, as Pastor say, we take time out to examine ourselves, amen, at this sacred time of God. To see if there be anything in us that's not like Christ, amen, we can get rid of, we can repent and get rid of it right now. If there any unforgiveness in our hearts, amen, for anyone, we can forgive right now in the name of Jesus. We want that clear conscience of what the Bible said. We judge ourselves, we will not be judged. So we thank God for that and just giving him praise this morning. We do magnify him today. And I just want to apologize to my wife. She's looking in. I forgot today was for a Sunday. I didn't make up. Amen things for her before I left. Amen. So I thank God this morning. I trust, amen, that we were praying yesterday, so we did communion yesterday with the in-laws. Amen. So we do it today. Amen. And on Friday, the Bible says, as often as you do it, we remember him. So it doesn't matter how many times you do it, as long and often as you do it, you do it to remember Jesus. And we don't want to ever forget what Jesus did for us. Amen. It could be a daily thing. You want to remember him every day. So as we come this morning, as we come this morning, Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, oh God, we do bless this bread, oh God, that represents Jesus' body, oh God. We do bless this cup that represents the blood that was shed it for us, oh God. And Father, as we come this morning, oh God, Father, we pray for all of those that may be going through in their bodies right now, oh God. As we take of the bread, as we take of the, of the cup, oh God, we pray that healing will come for Let that healing virtue come this morning into each and everybody. Receive healing this morning. And we just give you praise and we just say thank you that, oh God. We say that every ailment be gone right now. Every sickness be gone right now. Every evil spirit go right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We're releasing healing right now, God. In Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for that healing, oh God. We thank you for the anointing that is flowing right now, oh God. And we give you praise, God. We do magnify you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. What a mighty God, y'all. What an awesome God, y'all, God. And we just want to say thank you. For the blood of Jesus covers us. The blood of Jesus covers us. We thank God for that shedded blood right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. In Jesus' name. What a mighty God. For I receive the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. We take bread this morning. I will bread. And when he had given thanks, 
he break it. You may break the bread right now. And he said, take and eat. You may eat of the bread. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And we may take our cup this morning. And after he have given supper, you may drink of the cup. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This cup of the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God. We thank you for the bread this morning. We thank you for the blood this morning, the cup that represents the blood. Father, we thank you for the anointing this morning, O oh God. Father, we just give you praise this morning, God. And Father, we magnify you right now, dear God. And we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we may bring Sue this morning. Thank you for the anointing, God. I wanted us to take this moment right now, and we're we're going to have our responsive reading, if we, if you will. And uh, in honor of His Word, and uh, in honor of His Word, we're going to stand together to read His Word. And I've selected a portion of Scripture. If you'll join me, you will read. You will read the what's highlighted in yellow, and uh, and I will read what's in the white part. Okay, so let's stand together and join me in this. Uh, responsive reading, and if you'll lead the congregation, Pastor Calvin, in their portion of reading, and we'll just read, read it off the screen, because I, I don't have a separate copies of this. Okay, it's Psalms 8, 1 through 9, responsive reading. So you ready? We'll be, begin together, and you all read the yellow portion, all right? O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to, to tell of your strength, solacing your enemies and all who opposes you. When I look at the night sky mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place. What a mere mortal that you should think about them, human being that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. <laughs> Thank you, God. The flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. O oh Lord, our Lord. Your majestic name fills the earth. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless the Thank reading of his word Thank this morning. God. You can be seated. And Sue, Thank come on God. ahead. Amen. Amen. Today, he walks, he walks with me and 
that she used to sing in the clubs. Uh, she used to sing in a club in downtown Dallas called The Attic, The Cellar. All right, The Cellar. <laughs> she used to sing in a nightclub called The Cellar. And, but I, I, I don't tell you very often, she used to travel the country with an evangelist. And my good friend, the, the Deermans, and she used to travel the country with them and singing. And uh, for how, how long did you do that, Sue? Five years traveling around the country singing. God used her then, and God's using her right now. And it's just amazing. And I thank the Lord for her voice and for the anointing on that voice. It's just awesome. So glad we've got her. She, she sings. How many of y'all know, and we're going to release the children right now. We're going to release the children so all the little ones can go with Miss Cynthia. She has a lesson prepared for you, and we're going to go into God's Word. But the little ones, if you want to go meet her right now, let's pray for them. Which, by the way, I want to encourage y'all to bring the youth, because at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings, we got a youth teacher, and that's Jacob Pavon, and he's helping us with youth, teaching the youth. So you know young people, invite young people and get young people to come and be here at 9 o'clock in the morning, and he's ready to teach them, all right? So let's pray for them right now. Heavenly Father, we do lift up these little ones. We ask you to minister to them by your spirit, touch their hearts. We pray for Miss Cynthia. Lord, the Bible story they hear, the scripture verse they learn, Father, the songs they sing, let it stay with them, O oh God. The activity they work on, O oh Lord, bless them, I pray. Thank you for the anointing on Miss Cynthia and Jacob to teach them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 
What I was going to say, how many of you all know our nation needs Jesus right now, like, like never before? Now, I'm going to share with you a message right now, just simply entitled, the, the Heavens. The Heavens, and I have written here in my notes, and I put it different up there with a different translation, but there it is. The Heavens are telling of the glory of God, and that's from Psalms 19. The heavens are telling of the glory of God. And uh, I want to share with you, knowing that we have that eclipse coming tomorrow, a little bit about that message that God is bringing to our hearts right now, and we need to move with this message. But here it is. This is what I want you to know. I've already mentioned to you, right now, our nation needs Jesus like never before. Now, I'm going to tell you, revival is breaking out. Don't, don't for a moment. I was watching in the news this morning how already at Florida State University, and Auburn, and this is on, uh, on the news. They're showing it on the news. They're having a revival. Revival is breaking out. And not only that, they were mentioning about how some 200 and some odd uh, university students were baptized in the pickup truck, in the back part of the pickup truck. So they put a, a, a pool of water back there, and they're baptizing them in, at Auburn and also <clears throat> at Florida State University. And in Georgia, it's happening. And then at, at the other school, they baptized over 300 university students in the back of a pickup truck. Now, God is doing something, and God is moving, because a lot of times, we're, well, we're, what's happening, and how come we're not seeing? God is moving. So I want to encourage you about that. And at the same time, we know that our, our nation desperately needs God, and we need to pray like never before, and don't let up. Keep praying. This morning, I want to share with you a couple of scripture verses, but uh, I thought it would be appropriate to bring a message related to the eclipse, because this is historic, what is what's happening. And uh, passages, I, uh, let me see here, where, okay, good, Psalms 19, verse 1, and I got one, two, look what it says, it says, the heavens are telling of the glory of God, and the expanse of heaven, this is the Amplified is declaring the work of his hands. Day after day pours forth speech, and night after night reveals knowledge. And there is no speech. There is no speech, nor are there spoken words. You know, the skies, no spoken words, no speech. They declare the glory of God. I mean, how many of y'all have looked up at the sky and you wow, there is a God. Well, have you done that? I have. There, there is no speech, nor are there spoken words from the stars. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice in quiet evidence has gone out through all the earth. Can I tell you what's going to happen tomorrow has already gone out in quiet evidence throughout the whole earth. It's not even happened yet. And it's getting ready to go out. And, and uh, how many, anyone here, ha, is there anyone here that has not heard that there's going to be a total eclipse tomorrow? Raise your hand. Okay, all right. It's coming. You know how many total eclipses have been in the United States since the beginning of our nation? They say only eight. And it's historic. Only eight total eclipses. All right? So it says, yet their voice and quiet evidence has gone out through all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. In them and in the heavens he has made a tent for the sun. All right? Now, here's the other one. Look at Genesis 1.14. So we went to the Psalms, but now look at Genesis 1.14. Then God said, let there be light bearers, sun, moon, and stars. Now, you, you know Genesis 1 is the creation, right? He creates the animals. He creates the sea creatures. He creates the mountains. He creates all that. But now he's here, and he said, let there be light. Now let there be light. Light bearers, sun, moon, stars, and the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be useful for signs. Amen, somebody. Let them be useful for signs. Tokens, I guess another word you can use is signals. Signals. T signs of God's provident care and for making, look at that, seasons, days, and years. Now that's very important right there too because the seasons, the seasons is not talking about Fall, winter, spring, summer. It's not talking about that. The seasons that it's talking about, if you, if you look up that word seasons and you look at it in the Hebrew, 
it's talking about appointments. Appointments. And who do you think those appointments are with? They're with God. God wants to meet with us more than we want to meet with him. Y'all know that? And so tomorrow, like you know that I've, I've told you before, we all follow the modern calendar that we have right now, right? We all follow that modern cal calendar. We just do. We're used to it. January, February, March, April, May. We mark our days with that calendar. We mark our holidays with that calendar, all right? But never forget, God has his own calendar. And his calendar is older and starts at the beginning. And his calendar, see, we need to return to the things of God. And, I, and, and we've got our calendar, and I know that. And, and, and actually, it's Pope Gregory's calendar. But the calendar I'm talking about, God's calendar, like tomorrow, the solar eclipse, the solar eclipse falls on a special day. You know what that day is? Tomorrow is the first of Nisan. Nissan won. And y'all remember what happens 13 days after tomorrow on the 14th day of Nissan? Passover. Which, by the way, we're going to be celebrating Passover here in just, uh, in just a couple of weeks. We're going to celebrate Passover right here. And we want to look at Christ in the Passover. And you remember the Passover is that great event that God brought forth for the liberation of the children of Israel from Egypt, from Pharaoh, from death, from slavery. And it was a parallel for us that God raised up a deliverer. You remember the name of that deliverer? Moses, right? Moses, the deliverer, raised him up. And God used Moses to go and speak to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. The amazing thing is that he was already 80 years old. And he was going to do that and get ready to take him into the wilderness, 80 years old. And then he would finish his call at 120. And he was still ready to go after it. He wanted to cross that river. He wanted to get into that promised land. God said no. Joshua is going to do it. All of this, 14th of Nisan, God gave instruction every year on the 14th of Nisan, have the Passover. And remember the Passover. And these are the feasts. So then we know, he says, God says, remember the feast. There's the feast of Passover. There's the feast of Pentecost. There's the feast, there's the feast of trumpets. There's the feast of Yom Kippur. There's the feast of the, the, the tents, right? The Sukkot, the tents. What is that feast all about? God said, I want you to always remember I was with you in, in, the, in the wilderness. So every year on Sukkot, I want you to build little huts, and I want you to live in those huts for about a week. And I want you to look up through those branches and see the sky, and I want you to remember I watched over you for 40 years. 40 years. Now, remember, those 40 years, God provided for them that their shoes never wore out, their clothes never wore out, the water they needed. Can you imagine feeding two and a half million people out in the desert? And for 40 years... It never stopped. Clothes that never wore out. All that never stopped. And so here we see the parallel. Now stay with me because tomorrow is the first day of Nisan. Now, I want to tell you right now, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in things happening by accident. I don't even believe in luck. As a matter of fact, I don't ever tell. I don't have, Pastor Calvin, good luck on that, Pastor Calvin. Or, 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 or tell someone, good luck, good luck. My, my life is not based on luck. You know? I don't believe in luck. All right? For the believer, our trust is in God. All right? So I don't believe in coincidences. But all of these things that are happening, and it's tomorrow, the first day of Nisan. Do you think that's a coincidence? It's not a coincidence. Now, let, let's keep mo moving here, all right? So we know there's different calendars. There's Nissan, there's ER, there's Sivan, and it continues. And it's all about us lining up with God. You know how we line up? We line up with, all right, it's April, so let me think now. Okay, April, May's coming, Memorial Day. All right, June is coming, Flag Day. 
July is coming, 4th of July day. We're, because we're programmed that way. We, we know, we, we understand our, but we need to get to the place that we understand, you know what Nissan's all about? You know what Passover's all about? You know what the month of Nissan's all about? It's about deliverance. It's about our Savior that saved us. It's about, and you begin to line yourself up with God's calendar. Amen, somebody? Are you with me? If I sound radical about this, it's because we need to be radical about God. We really do. Now, come on. Come on with me. Here we go. Here's the next one. And now, I'm going to show you two pictures here. This is the first one. And now you see, you see that path right there. That's the path that's going through the United States, the solar eclipse, right? Down here, Mexico, all the way, and I'm going to show you the next slide, all the way to New England. Look, Maine, Maine, and going on out, that's the eclipse, the total solar eclipse. Now, I want you to see this. Look, look at this, and, and I... I got this off the YouTube, okay, and I found this, and I, I was fascinated by it. But this is incredible because here, look, I found out there's only really one town or one city in the whole nation by the name of Jonah. And you know where it's at? Jonah, Texas. Jonah is in Texas. But look, all the, uh, look at all the Ninevehs that it's going to be going close to. You see all the Ninevehs? Look at that. You got, uh, look at that. There's one Nineveh, two, two oh, that's little Egypt, the little Egypt, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit, but two Nineveh, three Nineveh, four Nineveh, five Nineveh, six Nineveh, seven, seven Ninevehs that it's going by. Now, what do you remember Nineveh and Jonah about? Except in the book of Jonah, where you remember that God told Jonah, remember what he tell him? Go and preach to Nineveh. They need to turn. They need to turn to God. If they don't turn, judgment is coming. They need to turn. Now look at this total eclipse that's going to be coming through. And Jonah, go and tell Nineveh. And Jonah said, no, no, I, I, I can't do that. I'm not going to do it. And he tried to escape God. How many of y'all know you cannot escape God? He, he even got on a boat to try to escape God. You can go anywhere, but you, can't, you cannot escape God. And then, how many of y'all truly believe that a big fish swallowed Jonah? Or do you think that was just a fairy tale? I'm telling you, I'm showing you these things, and this is not a coincidence. That it all in the area of Nineveh, 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 and Jonah. And Jonah, and, and, and the message is Repentance repentance turn turn to god this is happening tomorrow that that total eclipse remember there's only been eight total eclipses in our nation since 1776 only eight all right remember we read, read the scriptures the heavens declare the glory of god all right let's keep going are you with me so far this kind of stuff really excites me because I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe that things happen by accident. And I don't, I don't believe, good luck, good luck. I, you won't find me saying good luck. Somebody, if somebody tells me that, I'm not going to preach to them or anything. It, but I'm not going to, you know, but I don't believe in good luck. And I can tell you, I don't believe in bad luck either. All right? I believe that God is in control of all things. I believe God's in control of this. Let's keep going. Here we go. I'm going to watch my time, okay? Now, this is the one that happened in 2017. Seven years ago. Now, do you remember after 2017, the things that started to happen? Y'all remember about Michael Brown, what happened? Remember the name Michael Brown, what happened? You remember, uh, you remember the COVID that broke out? Remember COVID broke out? You remember those things that happened? that all of a sudden more changes started coming. Which, by the way, how many of y'all remember that there was a, an earthquake in New York on Friday? You know, what the, you know what the scale was of the magnitude of that earthquake in New York on Friday? Say it again. 4.8. And you know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow's 4.8. 4.8. Now, so, well, that, that's just a coincidence. 
That's just a coincidence. That just happened. Well, you just told me it's 4.8. And this total, the total eclipse is going to happen in 4.8. All right? I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Not coincidence. Here we go. Now, look at this one. Now, this one from all the way here, South Carolina, all the way up there, Washington, Oregon. And notice, what do you see there? Salem, Salem. Salem, 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 Salem. How many of them are there? How many? Seven. That's the number of completion, isn't it? Well, that, that's just a coincidence. Salem. Do, do you know what Salem means in the Bible? Now, remember, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of what? City of peace. And so here you got one in 2017. Peace, peace. Peace, 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 and the solar eclipse went through. All right? Are you with me? Let's keep going. Let's go to the next one. So here, at the very totality of the eclipse, back in 2017, you find little Egypt. Little Egypt, right there in the middle. All right? And you remember uh, Egypt what, what that has... With, with us with believers, we already talked about the Passover and deliverance from Egypt, deliverance from slavery, deliverance from death, deliverance from bondage, deliverance from Pharaoh, deliverance, and the parallels that God wants to set us free from bondage, from the devil, from, how many of y'all know we, we do, our nation needs deliverance? Would you agree with that? Amen, somebody. Here we go. Let's look at the next one. And then you, you see 2017 and 2024, and it makes a perfect X, right? And you see that X right there in the middle where it crosses is southern Illinois, right there, okay? You see that? So you see it, again, we had 2017 that came already, and you think about all these things that have happened. My, even, even the wars that have started since 2017, uh, the Ukraine and Russia, Ukraine and Russia, Israel, right, battling Hamas right now, the, 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 the wars that have started. And remember, God speaks of earthquakes and famine and violence and crime. Remember, I mentioned Michael Brown and, that, and, and, and the whole nation erupting and then different movements taking place and all these things just moving. Something is happening in the heavenlies. And I'm not here to tell you I know all what it is. I'm not here to tell you at all because I'm just barely touching the surface. What I'm saying, we better really be seeking God and going after God with all of our heart and let the Lord speak to our hearts all he wants to. Look, that, that's the X. Now, here's the next one. And then when you look, look, there was, there was a, an annular solar eclipse, October 14, 2023. And then there's the total solar eclipse because now I'm telling you, I'm talking about total, total eclipses. There's only been eight, but we know that there's, there's been uh, quite a few of partial eclipses. We know that. But when you're talking about total eclipses, the, al the almanac only records eight since the beginning of 1776 of our nation. But here you see 2023 and you see August uh, 2017, and then you see the one that's going to be tomorrow. And what's tomorrow again? Tomorrow is the first day of Nisan. When you read your Bible in the Old Testament, and it says, on the 14th day of the first month, and you're trying to figure that out, that's God's calendar. Or on the fifth day of the seventh month, that's God's calendar. That, that's not July the 5th, and that's not, that's not January the 14th. And then you begin to, to change and line up with God's word. Amen? You still with me? I don't want to bore anybody. If you see somebody just not nodding off, go shake them up. Just here, look, here's the next one. It's, this is the next one. But what I, wanted, what I wanted you to see, and they showed this. That's a Hebrew letter, a modern Hebrew letter for Aleph, Aleph. How many of y'all know that Jesus is known as the Alpha? That's the Greek letter, Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega. And in the Hebrew, this is Aleph. The beginning. 
Jesus. It's like Jesus, <laughs> we want Jesus to reign over our nation. The heavens declare your glory. Let's keep going. Now, that X that I showed you, that one X right there, southern Illinois, you see it? Right there. There's Illinois. Right there. That little area right there, you magnify it. You magnify it and you come up with this picture in a national forest. And you see what the name of the road there is? Salem Road. Oh, that, man, that's just a coincidence. God is moving. And God is doing. And there's more to come. We don't, we don't know all that is, that is involved. And there's a lot more than this. I'm just taking my time that I have right now. And, and this is what I want to show you. Look, Joel, I know the letters are kind of small right there. And, uh, but it's Joel chapter 2, verse 27 and 29. We know that one because it says, It shall come about after this that I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh. You remember that. Pour out my spirit on all flesh, all mankind. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. How many of y'all believe we're living in those days? God is pouring out his spirit on the young and the old. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. God is pouring out his spirit. Here's the next verse. Joel 2, 30 and 31. Now, now you see this? It says, I will show signs and wonders. Now remember, the word signs in the Hebrew means signals. Signal, and signals are for communication. I will give you signs. Communication. That, that solar eclipse, it's going to happen. It's a sign. It's a sign, and it's a wonder. God is in control of the universe. Would you agree with that? God is in control of where the sun is and where the moon is and where the stars are. God is in control. And he says, I will show signs, communication, signals, and wonders, miracles, displaying my power in the heavens. And on the earth, so many people are traveling right now. I'm telling you, campers are coming in. I don't know if you've seen it, but you probably see it on the news too. Campers are coming in. Uh, campgrounds are filling up. Uh, we're expecting a couple of thousand people right here in just our, our little area right here, this downtown square. A couple of thousand people to, to come together. And they all want to see this thing, the solar eclipse. They all want to see it. The, it's going to turn dark about 1.40 in the afternoon tomorrow. They all want to see it. Remember, it turned dark in the sixth hour when Jesus was on the cross, and it was dark until the ninth hour. Who do you think was in control of that? Or do you think that was a coincidence? Or do you think that was by accident? But God was in control from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, the Bible says. And tomorrow, it's going to turn dark. I heard one comment that all the animals are going to get freaked out. I hadn't even thought about that. I hadn't thought about the raccoons. I hadn't thought about the possums. I hadn't thought about the, and I, the horses, the cows. Uh, they're all going to get freaked out. Because they, they, they begin to turn. When, when, when it gets dark, all the animals, they know. It gets, but they're going to see it get dark, and they're going to see it get light pretty quick. By the way, right here in Mesquite, it's going to be for four minutes and eight seconds. And, and the longest period close to us here is four minutes and 21 seconds. But a lot of people are heading to our area. They're opening up the Cotton Bowl because they want to invite thousands of people. They're going to come in. They're, they're wanting to, to make sure that they accommodate the thousands that are coming into the area. They're coming from the East Coast. They're coming from the West Coast. They want to come see this. It's a sign and wonder. Do they know it's a sign and wonder? Do they know? Do, do, a, lot, do a lot of people know that, it, that this, this is a signal? This is a communication it's a communication that God has given us. Now think about that. A miracle displaying my power in the heavens and on earth. Blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Now that word terrible means reverent day. All right? It's not like horrible because when, when God comes, it's not going to be horrible. It's going to be 
tremendous. It's going to be awesome. But that's, that's the language of, of, of that scripture that it's going to be the reverent day of the Lord. You still with me? All right. And so here you see the next one. And this is where we go. So what's the message there, Pastor Dan? What do we need to, I'm going to tell you, our nation needs repentance. We need repentance. And we need to turn back to God. We need to turn back to the things of God, all right? Look, but if the wicked man turns away from all of his sins which he has committed and keeps all my statutes and practices justice and righteousness, he shall certainly live. He shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. All of his transgressions which he has committed will not be remembered against him. All sin, all transgressions. And because of his righteousness which he has practiced for his moral and spiritual integrity in every area of relationship, he will live. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, rather than that he should turn away from his um, malevolent acts and live? Do I take into any pleasure? Do you think God takes pleasure in that people are? No. He sent his son. Look, 27. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness, which he has committed and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he had committed, he shall certainly live and not die. God has given us an opportunity there's a Jonah and there's a Nineveh. And, and, and I, I even think of those passages in the Gospels. It talks about the sign of Jonah, the signs of Jonah. Of course, Jesus, as Jonah was in the belly of a whale and Jesus was in the earth, right? And Jesus came forth. But now we're seeing even something more. Jonah and, and the sign of Jonah and Nineveh and God giving, God giving our nation an opportunity. Turn from your way. Turn from follow the Lord and we're seeing revivals in Auburn in Florida State University kids that are getting their they're giving their life to the Lord and I say kids they're university students they're they're young adults look here are the requirements the requirements of repentance and, and we must see this and we must continue to but first of all man, man must see sin as God sees sin we need to be lined up with his word. Man must see sin as God sees sin. How does God see sin? He hates it. He doesn't even want to look at it. You remember, we, we just, just a, a little over a week ago, we came in here on a Friday, a good Friday, talking about the hours, six hours, Jesus on the cross, and then there was a moment when he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Remember my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And God had turned his back. Why? Because Jesus became sin on the cross for us. He became sin and took our sin. And you remember when he died, there were earthquakes there was a tearing of that curtain that was separating the Holy of Holies from the Holy Place. Tearing of that, his blood that was shed, that now we can enter in. Now we have an advocate. Now we have someone that represents us. Now we have someone that receives us. And that when God sees us, if we receive Jesus, he doesn't see that sin anymore. He just sees Jesus and his blood. His blood. Man must see sin as God sees sin. And I, I just wrote down Isaiah 6, 1 through 5. I didn't put it up here, but you remember that. He, on the, in, in, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. You remember that passage? And then he, in continuing, he's saying, and then he said, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. He saw himself in the presence of God. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I've seen God. I've seen the Lord. He's calling us to holiness. Holiness. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. That's number one. 
we must see sin as man sees sin. Number two, man must repent. Repent. We've got to turn. Man must repent of sin and sins. Our sinful nature, not only our individual sins, but our very desire and yearning to sin. There's a difference, isn't there? There's our sinful nature that we would turn. Romans 3.23, the wages of sin is death. That's his law. There's no getting out of that. That's why he sent his son. His son had to die for our sin. The payment of sin is death. But his gift to us is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then uh, Romans 5.12, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and we know that one man, the first Adam, right? The first Adam. And death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin, the same way one man came and took all of our sin. Took all of our sin. And then in Romans, Romans 6, 23, and, uh, and Romans 3, 23, all have sinned. And Romans 3, uh, 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Man must repent from sin and sins. And then the third one, man must repent from self-righteousness. This is a big one. Man re must repent from self-righteousness, and that's dead works. I mean, make sure you got that one. Because no one's going to get to heaven on their works. And you help people to understand, if, if you ever hear somebody say, I hope I'm getting good enough to get into heaven, Please help them to understand nobody can be good enough. You just tell, and you're not telling them to make, to make yourself look, look spiritual or feel spiritual. That's just a fact. Somebody said, I hope I'm good enough to get to heaven. I hope one day I'll make it to heaven. I hope I can get in there. I hope I was a good enough daddy, a good enough mama. I hope I'm good enough. You, you tell them immediately, nobody can be good enough. You t tell them immediately because they got to hear it. Because if they could, then why would God send his son to die on the cross? He sent Jesus because nobody can be good enough. Amen, somebody? Amen. Remind them and tell them because we must repent from our self-righteousness, from our dead works. And that's where Titus 3, 5 comes in. Titus 3, 5, it says, It's not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy, and see, that's what we were praying earlier with Pastor Samuel. Your mercy, God. We cry out to you for mercy. Mercy, Lord. It's according to his mercy he saves us. His mercy. Man must repent from self-righteousness. Number four, man must repent because it's required by God. Acts 17.30, and I've got it up there. I think I've uh, Acts 7. No, I did, I'll read it to you. Acts 17.30, and this is what it says. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Where, where, he commands it. He wants us to repent. 17, it's required by God. He commands all men everywhere to repent, Acts 17, 30. And the fifth one, man must have repentance as an attitude of life. Amen, somebody. I'm telling you, we have to wake up every day with an attitude of repentance. Because if you don't, you'll get sucked in. You have to be continually turning from sin. Because sin's all around you, and it's drawing, and you got to be continually. There, there is no one time does it all. No, you keep turning. You keep turning and turning and turning. I, I can't tell you how many have fallen. Because they, they didn't think they had to turn anymore. And they become numb. Next thing you know, they're doing this. They're doing that. They're getting sucked into this. They're getting sucked. In, and next thing you know, they're falling off. That happens. We have to have an attitude of repentance. Amen. Life, repentance. Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? I love this, this passage. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Paul is talking about we've been saved by grace. He saved us. Saved us from all... And he says, what do we say then? This is Paul talking about this. What do we say then? What shall we say? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? 
And then he says, absolutely not. A and that's emphatic. We keep turning to God, turning to the Lord. And 1 John 2, 1, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. He's given this uh, so we don't sin. Well, I'm going to sin anyway. A lot of people, they come to God, God, forgive me of my sin. And even though they don't say it, they just, God, forgive me. I'll probably do it again tomorrow and the next day as well, Lord, but please forgive me. What kind of, what kind of confession is that? Amen, somebody. Amen. Lord, I, I, I feel so bad about it. I feel so bad that I did it, but I'm probably going to do it again tomorrow. That's not, that's not a confession of a sin. Confession of a sin is that you agree with God that you hate that sin and you're not going back to, to that sin. That's an agreement with God. Confession. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Our, our, the church has gotten to a place where we start, we start seeing this happening, this happening, th these little things happening, and it's like we don't say anything anymore. Because I just don't want to be judged. I don't want people to judge me. I don't, and we don't say anything, and we just kind of turn our head. And it just continues to grow and grow and grow to where there's just a handful. But, but know this. And there's a bunch rising up at FSU and Auburn University and more young people coming up. All right, here's the next one. And, and we're just about at the end here. How does repentance come? about repentance and I, I really believe this message it, um, we have to know this message receive this message share this message um, I, I really believe this solar eclipse that's happening God there's a declaration right now happening and it's all over our nation the earthquake and again there was an earthquake that happened Friday all I can say keep your eyes on Israel Keep your eyes on Israel because we saw what's been going on with Israel even since 2017. And now it's going to be 2024. Now we're going further. Which, by the way, there's a lot of talk about the red heifer that they want to have. They can present it when they get ready to rebuild that third temple that ushers in the coming of the Lord. And, and there have already been red heifers delivered to Israel from Texas. And they're there right now. And so things are falling into place. And we need to be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God and what he desires, what he wants. Look, repentance, repentance comes from God and re repentance comes from asking for it. It's a, it's a simple repentance come from. Acts eleven eighteen. 18, when they heard this, they quieted down and glorified and praised God saying, that also granted to the Gentiles repentance. God granted. God gave to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people. He granted to them, to the Gentiles, repentance that leads to eternal life. That is real life after, after earthly death. God, it comes from God. And then number two, repentance comes from asking for it. And you know this passage. So Ask and keep on asking, it'll be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking. For everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking persists. Then it goes into, what father among you? You remember that? What father among you, if his, if his son asks for a, a snake instead of a fish? You ask the father, ask the father for repentance. Give me repentance, Lord. I want to follow God. And what is the genuine fruit of repentance? And I put down Luke 19, great passage to read right there. But that's the story of Zacchaeus. Read that story again. Because in that story, you'll find a godly sorrow for sin. A confession of sin. A forsaking of sin. And even restitution. Those four parts. Because you remember the story when he, when Jesus was coming into town and he saw that man that had no friends, that wee little man that had no friends and was, was stealing from people. I mean, I don't know how else you can say it, but he was cheating people. 
And then, and, and he was, he heard about Jesus, wanted to see Jesus, got up on that tree to see Jesus. He had no friend, had nobody to, to help. And he gets up on that tree. Jesus comes through and Jesus calls him out by name. Don't you just love Jesus? He knows you by name. He knows you. He looks up, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to go to your house. Can you, I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to go to your house. Can you imagine what Zacchaeus felt at that moment? Didn't have any friends. I imagine, I heard some preacher say, uh, uh, Danny DeVito would be good at that part right there. Danny DeVito, can you see Danny DeVito getting down from that tree and getting, yeah, Danny DeVito. But he got down from that tree. He went with Jesus. They went to the house. And then we, we have no idea. They, they never recorded what was, what was said in that visit, what was talked about. It never recorded. But when they got through, Zacchaeus said, Lord Jesus, half my goods I give to the poor. And if I have robbed anybody, if I've taken from it, I will pay them four times more. For he was confessing his sin. You see? He was confessed. There has to be action. Some, somebody can't say, well, yes, I became a Christian. Praise God, I, I became a Christian. And they're still living like, like, the, like the devil. That, that's a mockery. You, sin is sin. There has to be change. There has to be change. There's a lot of people that are going to be surprised on that day. Not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only those that doeth the will of my Father for who is in heaven. A lot of people don't like to hear this kind of preaching. They like to hear that they're fine, you're okay, you're going to make it, you're okay, but you, nobody makes it on their own merits. Nobody does. You have to hear. We, we a nation, well, it's okay for this these, these two to get married. It's okay to these two to get married. It's okay to these two to get married. A, and God defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman. A man and... He didn't, he didn't change that. He never changed that. I don't, I don't know. If, so, if somebody here, you show me somewhere where he changed that. Show me where he changed... He didn't change that. And we have to stand on God's word. <coughs> but then all of a sudden, because we say that, we're the bigots. We're the bigots, and we're the one, not, we have no tolerance. What's the matter with y'all? And then we just, all of a sudden, we go like this. We need to stand. Amen, somebody. All right, y'all ready for the, here's the last one. Okay, well, here's two more. Two more. Repentance is necessary for salvation, and this was the message of Jesus, which, by the way, the apostles, the disciples, they all preach repentance. Here it is. We've been talking about repentance today. Matthew 4, 17, from, all, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life in a way that proves repentance. This is the amplified version, right? Seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and, of course, Matthew 6, 33, uh, Luke chapter 12, uh, it says, but seek him first and his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. He'll take care of everything else. Just seek him first. All right? So here are my three takeaways, okay? Here it is. All right. Getting ready to fold my papers up and close my book so it'll make everybody feel good that we're getting ready to go. Okay? Here it is. Number one. And, and these are very, very simple here. The first thing, we must turn from sin. Just three here. We must turn from sin. Have you done that? Do you keep doing that? I mean, you got to do it every time you're in your living room and you, you're just kind of surfing those channels. Amen, somebody. Amen. Do you know when you're surfing those channels, you're turning from sin? Because something catches your eyes and it's trying to, come on, stay right here on just a little bit. Come on, stay on this channel just a little bit. Stay right there. Come on, just keep, 
Keep looking. Keep watching. You're okay. It's all right. And it's not all right. All right? You turn from sin. You need to do it in, uh, uh, among, among different groups. You need to do it. Sometimes you might find yourself in a group and they're, they're talking nasty. They're talking dirty. They're t- getting all this stuff. You can either stay there and, li- oh, yeah, yeah, ha, ha. And you start joining in, ha, ha, ha. Amen, somebody. You have to take a stand and turn, all right? Well, I, I want to be one of the good old boys, too. I want to be like them. I want to be one of the ladies. Ladies? I didn't know ladies did that. We must turn from sin. Number two, we must return to the things of God. And, and, and I put that down, that we must return to the things of God. And let me just give you an example here. There used to be a blue law. We, we need to turn and return. Turn and return. You remember Sundays when the blue law, yeah, everything was closed except maybe a couple of stores, necessary stores, you know? And he, and he says, take your Sabbath rest. That's, that's returning to God. He says, take one day to rest. That's returning to God, all right? And, and I'm going to include also, let's get back to these days that the Lord told us to remember. The Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of, and, and, and remember that word feast means appointment. I want to meet with you. God says, I want to meet with you. Well, God, I, I don't have time right now, God. Wow, we're going to tell God that? No, I don't even have to say that. A lot of us do that. He says, I don't have time right now, God. And he wants to spend time, more than we want to spend with him. Is it okay that I share things like this? All right? We must return to the things of God. The Sabbath, the love for Israel. Don't stop loving Israel. We, we have groups coming up in our nation right now. Hate Israel. Go after, get, we don't want Israel. We want, turn that. Amen, somebody? Y'all been hearing that lately around our nation? Stay with Israel. They're the apple of God's eye. They're his favorite. Love Israel. And then love one another and, and everything that's in the heart of God. And there's so much more. I'm just touching the surface right now this morning. And here's the final one. And we must listen to the Holy Spirit. We got to tune our ears and listen. What do you think the Holy Spirit will say when you're right there with that remote and you're looking at those channels and does the Holy Spirit, yeah, you're, you're in a good place right there. You just stay right there. That's good. When you know you need to get off that channel real quick, we know the voice of the Holy Spirit because what he tells you lines up with his word. And if it's not lined up with his word, then it, it, the Holy Spirit's not saying that. We've got to line up with God. So I'm going to stop right there. And we're just going it, to, it's about turning. We turn to you, Lord. And we need you. And God, what's going to happen tomorrow? Use this, Lord. Use it. And tomorrow is the first of Nisan. And 13 days later, Passover is being observed. Oh, Father, we love you. We want to follow you, God. We need you. Amen? All right. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Now you let your spirit begin to surge with a hunger and a thirsting for God right now, right where you are. You say, well, how do you do that? How do you? Let your spirit connect with his spirit. Let your spirit connect with his spirit. And let your spirit begin to surge with a hunger and a thirsting for him in your spirit. Just, and just telling him, I need you, God. I need you. And then when you feel prompted by the Lord, you make your way down here with me. Make your way down here with me. When you feel prompted by the Lord, and even as we're getting ready to see, this is a sign and a wonder. It's a sign and a wonder. A total solar eclipse that's going to go over all of these areas. 
and seven Ninevehs and one Jonah. No coincidence. And the one in 2017 going over all of those that were Salem, peace, and one big X marked over our nation. One big X marked over our nation with the very center of the X over a, a, a national forest and a road called Salem Road. Peace. Coincidence. There are no coincidences with God. God is moving. There are wars and rumors of wars. There are earthquakes. There are famines. There's violence. There's crime. He says, I'm coming back. I'm coming back, and I'm coming back quickly. And we want to say, Lord, use us. Use me, Lord. Wherever I go, wherever I am, let us be light. Let us be salt, Lord. Use us, O God. Is there anyone here this morning that you, that you would say, Pastor Dan, I need Jesus. I want to I wanna make my life right with God. I need to repent. And maybe you just feel convicted in your heart this morning and you say, I haven't been right with God. I need to get right with God. Pray for me. I need Jesus. Is there anyone here like that this morning? I want to pray for anyone that says, I, I need that. Raise your hand wherever you are. Just raise it up high. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? <coughs> Anyone else? We need you, God. We need you, Lord. Let me lead you in a prayer of repentance right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I confess I haven't been walking your path and I need to turn back to you. I need to turn back to you. Forgive me, Lord. I need you, God. I can't make it without you. Right now, I receive of that repentance and I turn from sin and I turn to you and I receive of you. Let me see sin the way you see it. I want to follow you. You confess it before the Lord. You confess it. Father, I confess it. I haven't been walking right. I confess it. I haven't been speaking right. I haven't been doing right. I confess it. And I turn to you. And I need you. Anyone here this morning that says, Pastor Dan, I'm a believer, but I need a church home and I need to connect and I need to be with a church family. Pray for me. Raise your hand. Anyone here like that? Real quick, and I'm just going to wait for a moment if there's anyone like that. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. Now just lift up your heart in this moment before the Lord just to worship him. Just right where you are, you may just want to lift up your hands. Lifting up your hands is a, it's a sign of yieldedness, surrender, submission. I yield myself to you. I surrender myself to you. I submit to you. That's it. That's right. And I welcome you, Lord. Oh, I love you. And just tell them that. Tell them you love them. And, tell, and, and ask the Lord, fill me with more of you, Lord. Let it truly be less of me and more of you. I receive of you. Oh, we worship you. We worship you.
Now, Esai, don't stop that. Don't stop that music. Don't stop it. In this same attitude of worship, making decisions, in this same attitude of worship, let's worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. We should do it with worship. That's the way we should, we should give with worship because it's an adoration to the Lord. I'm going to ask the ushers, if you need an envelope to raise your hand, the ushers will get envelopes to you immediately. I'm going to ask one usher to, to do this side and another usher to do the other side and just to get those envelopes to you immediately. If you want to give online, you can give online. But just to do it with your heart. This, this week, we're, we're using the boot again. You all have heard of tornadoes in Oklahoma. There have been some tornadoes this past week in different parts, and we're still giving to these to Texas men, Texas men and women on a mission that they're going and helping. So we're continuing to give towards them. Last month, we gave over 300, I think we gave close to $500 last month. And we're just by the, the, the little bit here, a little bit there that we collect in a boot, just giving to them. We're still, we're gonna do that, but also tithes and offerings our tithes and offerings. So if you need an envelope, anybody else need an envelope? You didn't get one? I do. I need one. Just raise your hand and they'll be glad to get you one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just do this as unto you. We do it with our heart. Receive our worship, even with our tithes and offerings, O oh God. Thank you for the privilege of giving. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, ushers, go ahead and receive the offering. And Debbie, come on up, Debbie, and you can make the announcements. was interesting. Was that interesting to y'all? He never ceases to amaze us. A man could never have put together what he just told us today. Only God. Only God. We serve a mighty God. I'm trying to get myself together here. Okay. So we got birthdays this week. Sherry Bennett's not here. She's been dealing with COVID, but Sherry's having a birthday this week. Carla Jeffs, uh, Pastor Calvin's daughter-in-law is having a birthday. And my son, Josh Alamon, is turning 30. My baby's turning 30 this week. And so we wish all of them happy birthday. Um, of course, we're still having Cynthia, um, Cynthia uh, Piat's um, baby shower this uh, on April the 13th, which is next Saturday. Uh, from 1 to 3, it's a girl. She's registered at Amazon and on t at Target. Uh, so and we'll have it right there in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, the leadership meeting is also next Sunday. So RSVP with Mary Kay for that. Uh, the baptism Sunday is going to be next week. We've got some baptisms that we're going to be doing next Sunday. And then the men's breakfast is on the 20th. Uh, also, do we have the, uh, the video ready for extravaganza? We, for those of you who participated and were here, uh, we had a wonderful time. And thank you to everybody last week that participated in that. Was that last week? Was that last week? My goodness. That was last week. And so uh, we've got a video just to show some of the highlights and all the fun that we did. And then uh, I have a couple of more announcements right after that.
You know, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people to put that uh, kind of stuff on, but it takes a great leader to put all that together. And so, Cynthia, we just want to honor you this morning. If you'll just come down, we have a little something for you. <laughs> Cynthia put like three billion Easter eggs together with Candy in them and her and Jacob, and she's just always so amazing to put these things together. And, and let me tell you why, because she's never grown up. She's still a child. She's never, she's still, she's still one of the kids. Is it true? It's true. So we just want to give this to you. She's my sister, y'all. We just love her so much. Not physically, but you're my sister. And that's why we fight all the time. We, 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 <laughs> we genuinely love each other, yes. And she just has not got a clue what she means to this church, and we just appreciate her so much. Um, we are having an eclipse, as Pastor Dan said, tomorrow at 1.40. And so what we want to do is make sure you protect your eyes. So we actually have glasses for everybody here today, and if you probably enough to, for everybody to have a couple. So uh, they say Harvest Church on them. And uh, we ordered these just for you. So if we have some left over, we just want to make sure they get out. Do not look at the sun tomorrow. It will ruin your eyes. You have to have these glasses on, and that's not a joke. Uh, you got to wear glasses like these and make sure they're certified. So these are certified, and so we've got all these for you today. Thank you, Debbie. All right, we are we're missing some folks today. Please continue to pray for our uh, those that are out there. Bill Lowe, we need to pray for Bill Lowe and uh, remember him in prayer. And then also Frank and Alyssa are not here. Remember Alyssa's mom too, Esther Escamilla. Remember her; she needs prayer. And Cheryl Rendon, also Cheryl Rendon needs prayer. So we. And Alyssa is out sick with her back, so we need to lift her up as well. So we do have some visitors here this morning. we got Cade, and we have Ariella that are here, and we're so glad that they're here. We welcome them. And then back in the back, sitting next to Rosemary and uh, Candy. And what is your name? Mercedes. Let's welcome Mercedes as well. We're so glad that she's here. Amen. And uh, I think everyone else has been here before. So uh, one quick announcement, okay? I, I got so excited with this choir that sang last week. We're going to keep it going. And we're going to do a little choir practice every Wednesday night, just 15 minutes working on a song. We need those that like to sing and want to sing and be in the choir. It'll be like from 8 o'clock to 8.15. And, and, and we need you, all right? We've got more music coming in. We're going to work on doing one song every month and see what we can do. We had 14 people up here last Sunday, and we had a couple of folks that, that were not able to come uh, because they were sick, or we would have had 16. And then we have a couple of more that, w that hopefully we can recruit them. One of them was here earlier. I think she's left already, but I'm hoping we can recruit her, and that's Monica. Monica and Destiny and Charity. So anyway, we're going to go after it and just do it. So will you stand with me? Let's all stand together as we get ready to go forth. And uh, after we pray, just love each other in the Lord. Just tell folks around you. And I'm just so glad my dad is here. Please pray for my mom. My mom wasn't feeling good today. She's just having a little stomach issue. And we want to pray for her healing as well. We have a testimony that we want to share. And I think he probably forgot it, but... We paid our house off Friday morning, so we are debt free. That's a that's a big hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So uh, that, about 22 years there, and uh, we, we're so thankful, so grateful. So that, that is a tremendous praise the Lord. Thankful that we did that. All right. So receive the blessing of the Lord and go forth and be a blessing to others. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious to you and lift up his countenance on you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm going to count to three and let's just real loud for the glory of the Lord and all the kids joining us as well, all the children. One, two, three. Amen. Love each other in Jesus' name and have a wonderful, wonderful day. 
keep those uh, glasses and take a couple of them if you need them. And uh, don't forget, protect your eyes, protect your eyes. Blessings to you.